Okay, we're recording again. You had a nice little 10 minute break there because uh, apparently um, if you uh, are cheap and you get the, the free version, you only you have to wait 10 minutes in between. Meetings. So <laughs> there you go. Um, okay, so where do we leave off? Where, where were we? Um, I guess uh, you, you, um, you, uh, we were talking about, so you moved to Vegas when you were, so you moved to Vegas when you were, when I was living here in Vegas, but we weren't really close then. So we didn't really talk. Um, so I don't really remember much of that, to be honest with you, but, um, but then the more significant one was you broke your arms. That's where we were at, right? You broke your arms and, um, I sold my condo on the strip. Uh, I ended up moving in with Kathy, who's Harvey's mom. Um, you moved into the condo. Your basically your intention was to move here. I was, and you were going to help with Harvey. Yes. And, um, not a year, not more than a year later. I, you know, me and Kathy divorced. Um, I moved in by myself, and then ever since then, we've had split custody with Harvey and you've just been there to, to kind of help when needed. Right. Right. And that's where we are now. And, um, so how would you say that changed our relationship? It you changed everything because I lived through Harvey in a whole new light and I became happy and responsible and on and just with me you know no boyfriend no men no it was just you and I and Harvey and Kathy mm -hmm. for a short time Kathy but mm -hmm. well Kathy's still uh, oh yeah part Kathy's of definitely yeah. still in our lives but mm -hmm. um when you split custody um we just were all we were together all the time that we could be yeah so we went from i mean i probably see you at least three days a week now for at least an hour you know maybe you know yeah or more mm -hmm. cool well uh i mean there's a lot in between all of that that we could probably hit on but we're not going to be able to but um uh, what uh I guess I would say, what would you say going, going into the parenting? Um, I mean, as you know, I'm very, um, you know, my, my life has changed because of Harvey, because my, you know, I switched from whatever it was that my mindset was before Harvey to, um, like now all I care about is being a good dad. Like there's nothing, there's right. literally zero, Thing that even comes close to reaching that importance like I feel like I've I've structured my life in a way to where I mean I I I can I can focus 100% on Harvey whenever I have the ability to um so from that parenting aspect I'm always looking for like just you know just different perspectives what so what would you say what is uh you know Obviously, your I feel like your perspective on parenting has probably changed a lot from from now that you're a grandma and you see me being a dad versus the way you were as a mom. Be by the way, my dad was as a dad. What would you say? What's one? What's a piece of advice or a thought process that you have as far as um, you know, as far as do you have that would be helpful to me or anybody who's watching this? I just think you have to put a hundred percent into being, you know, there for your children and what you have. And as far as me, I, I try to put a hundred percent into my grandchildren now, which I have, if the other ones live by me, that would be my whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, basically, Harvey comes first for me because, and you come first for me. It's just a growing up process. Um, I just never grew up till just six years ago, really. And then I still am a little bit not grown up, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, let's see. What would you say? Um, would you say that a lot of parents um, put 100% into their kids? Would you say? No. no, I think everything else around them consumes them. I think they don't think about it. They just go about their lives. Um, their work, their this, their that, and everything consumes them or what they want and for them. And I think people don't realize it, but they're very, uh, they don't, they just don't put the time and effort and because they don't know. Don't know what? They, they just don't think about it. They don't know. Like I know now because I'm kind of reliving my life. Um, but a lot of parents, it's just their work and their their time with their friends or this or that. And they just don't think about what they're not giving or what they're not, you know, putting 100% into. How do you think that compares to how I am as a parent? Well, when you have Harvey, you give him 100%. 100% of what? Of your time, of your knowledge, of your love, everything. Uh, yeah. I mean, I still feel like I struggle with that sometimes. I'm 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 always distracted by work. I'm just I'm distracted by a lot of things. I feel like. Well, yeah, you have to do work, but that comes second. Mm -hmm. Harvey's first. Yeah. I feel like with a lot of parents, they, they almost look at their kids as an afterthought or like an annoyance rather than. Yeah. That's the big thing. Annoying. And you know, like I can't get dressed. I can't do this. I can't do that. And that's how you were to me. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm so lucky that I have this second chance and I'm learning so much with that because everything before with you was it, all I was thinking about was what's going on in my life. Mm. What, you know, now it's just different. It's, you see things in a different perspective. Mm. Okay. What are some, what are some big, uh, what are some big obstacles that you see with me as a parent that I'm going to have to overcome? from my, from the way, from the way I am as a parent, from what I do, the, the approach I take, what are some obstacles that you see me coming that I'm not seeing? I, I don't, I don't know. I don't see any right now. Nothing? No, I think you, you're doing, you know, I know it gets frustrating with the, um, the split custody. And I think that we need to um, probably all of us need to not talk about it. You know, like Harvey needs to just know we're all love. Him. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. What's something, um, what's something that you wish you would have known or understood better as a parent? growing up as as your kids were growing up what's something it could be it could be it has to do with me or it could have to do with tiffany because tiffany lived with you full time for her entire childhood right so what's what's something that you wish you'd known or understood better growing as a parent that you know now that you wish you I, I just wish i wouldn't have gotten so frustrated and let everything go like i wish i would have had a routine i wish i would have had more structure. I wish I would have listened to my kids more. I wish I would have, um, there's so much. I wish I would have did different. So, I, somebody, so as somebody who struggles with that, well, I don't feel like that's, that's one of my struggles. I feel like that's where I'm. No, you, you're totally opposite. Why do you think that is? Probably the way you were raised. Well, my dad wasn't like that. No, but um, 
how does somebody, how does the better question is how does somebody who struggles with that or doesn't see that, how, how do they work on seeing that and how do they, how do, how would they approach becoming better at that? I think they just have to put their children first. But if you ask, if you ask any, pretty much any mom or any dad, do you put your children first? They're going to say yes. Yes, but really a and lot. They're gonna, and they're going to believe the answer is yes. They're not, they're not necessarily lying. They're in their right. head. They believe that, that they are putting their kid first, but what does that truly mean? Well, the thing with me was I would just let you guys do whatever because I was too, it was too hard to put structure down. It was too hard. Everything was just too hard. So I just, okay, go or okay, do this or, you know, you have to, it's hard and you have to deal with that. You have to be there for them. You just, you have to, you have to give your kids, your attention, your time, your love. They have to have responsibilities if it's hard or not. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think even my viewpoint of what structure means for for my kid versus what I look at it as now, like I feel like I'm very structured with Harvey, but I'm also, um, I've also changed my perspective on how I'm going to lead him. Like, I don't believe... I mean, my belief is I don't, I don't ever tell him what to do ever. I don't, I don't, I don't tell him, I don't, I don't, I don't give him demands. And I think that's a, I think that's a really big thing that parents, that parents miss is they, they think that like, if I told someone that they would automatically assume like, because I don't give him demands, I just let him do whatever I want. And I don't have any structure, but I believe it's the opposite. I, we have a very, very strong structure and he knows exactly what to expect of him at all times. Yes, because in that structure, you give him a choice, two there's choices two or choices. whatever. Not two necessarily, but there's always, he knows right. that he's going to make decisions based on and based on the day. And I think that, um, and I think that there's the other approach where you look at structure as just telling the kid what to do all the time and forcing them to do it because that's, that's what the rule is. And I, and I think I used to believe that that was the right way, but now that I've I've been looking at um, being a parent more than more of a as a leadership role versus. You know, I think a lot of parents are they're either they're either dictators where they just tell their kids what to do or they just let them do whatever they want. Let them do whatever they want, basically, yeah. And that's where you get in trouble. That's what I did. But I think you also get in trouble being a dictator too. I think if you're a dictator, the kid is going to rebel against you and not want to not want to not not want to please you essentially because you're not leading them you're dictating them you're telling them you don't there's still there's still human beings there's i don't believe that that you know i mean i'm still figuring that out but like i don't believe that you have to dictate anybody what to do like you don't that's right. that's you know and that's that goes along you know being part of the military my entire life pretty much like it's pretty much a dictatorship, but I think part of the reason that I'm so successful in my part of the part of the military is because I rebel, I rebel against that whole mentality. I don't, I don't just do things because somebody tells me to do them. I question, I question everything. I, and I, and I think that parents that want to just dictate their kids, they don't like when you encourage your kids to like, I encourage Harvey to, if he doesn't believe something or he doesn't think he should be doing something, I encourage him to say, why the hell am I doing this? What am I doing? Like, I think right. that's a really important part of your development, but a parent that doesn't want to, it's, it's also a lot harder to deal with a kid that is going to ask. Those right. questions. So you have to be prepared to, right. I encourage him to argue with me. Like, right. Um, in a sense, like to you know, have a discussion, he has to know how to do it respect it respectfully, but I will never tell him you must do this because the reality is, whether he's five or whatever, he has a choice. Right. Because I've seen the other side where people try to tell me what to do. And I just told them. And, nope, yeah. I'm you, not. you rebelled. Right. And it's the same. I feel like it's the same concept, like all the way up into being in the army. Like 
when somebody tells me you will do this because of, because I'm in charge, I don't care what the, what the topic right. is. I'm not going to listen to it. What right. that's a kid is going to be like that. Just times 20. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, it can go, it can go so many different ways. You just never know, but the, what, but what you instill in their, in their lives is, you know, if it's love, if it's hard work, they're probably going to, you know, subconsciously going to have that in, in their life. Well, I mean, I think it's, it's all of it. I think you got to have, you have to. Right. You got to have everything. It's very difficult. And a lot of parents, they just focus on one thing and, you know, um, I don't know anyway, but that's, that's hard. That's where I kind of go with that. But it's, but I, for me, I mean, I feel like, I don't think we should be telling kids what to do. I don't think, I don't think any kid listens to that. I think there are certain circumstances where you have to, you're going to have to, you're going to, they're, they're not going to be happy with what you tell them, but right. Bill doesn't have to be put into a place where no, I'm dad. I said so. Yeah. There's rules in life and you have to follow some of them. And I find when I do try to tell, like, when I do raise my voice at him or I yell at him or whatever, he doesn't respond nearly as well as if I'm, if I'm calm and quiet uh, and I just have a conversation with him and I debate with him. Right. Yeah. And when he gets so good at debating that he's be- able to out debate me, he's probably <laughs> going to have valid. He, what he's saying is going to be valid and, and, and that there's no problem with that either. Even if it's not what I believe is right. Right. If he can outsmart me and he can out have a conversation with me and 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 out justify me in some whatever topic we're debating and he wins that debate, well then he's right. Right. And which he's doing now a little bit. And I let him win. And I and that's yeah. and, and that's fine. But he still knows but he knows his he knows his limits. He knows his limits. He knows what's right and wrong or what you say you know how would you say that uh how would you say what would you say the big difference between my parenting style is versus tiffany's parenting style my sister you know really you guys are a lot alike um tiffany tries to talk to them she's um she doesn't yell and get all hysterical. She tries to put her children first. And, um, but she, I don't know. I, I think you guys are a lot alike. I do. Yeah. What would you say the biggest difference is? Well, I think the difference is um, the fact that you have split custody and you, the time you have is very, um, you know, it's, you just make the best out of the time you have where she has more time and, and she has a whole different household. She has a husband and and they have their routines. She definitely is into the routine and definitely into not yelling and screaming and definitely not being selfish about, you know, oh, I want to do this. So you guys just do whatever, you know, it's all about her children and her husband. I don't know. I really The fact that Tiffany kind of, I, I don't know. I really think you guys do a lot the same. I can't think of. Mm. Well, nice. Um, what do you think? Do you have any comments on that? Uh, no, I think, I mean, I think we, we, 
think similar. I mean, she's not, uh, I'm a lot more, uh, uh, I don't know if aggressive is the word, but aggressive in my belief system where she'll like, she'll second guess it a lot more than I do. Like when I come, when I come to a conclusion, I don't usually steer away from it as easily. Right. So I think, I think that, but I, I, I don't know if that's a big difference. That's just like a, she's more of a thinker. Like I don't overthink as much as she does, I think. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I was going to ask one more thing. Um, do you, uh, I don't know. I think, uh, oh, what was your, what was your relationship like with my dad? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm dropping you here. Um, or maybe not even your relate. You don't have to talk about your relationship, but what, how would you describe my dad? Well, to be honest, your dad was very structured to some level of what he what he believed is what he believed, and there was no um, talking about it. Um, he's just like I don't know, but what what was the question? What do you? How would you describe my dad as a person? As a person. Yeah, how it explains to some. I think uh, he's a very nice person. He he, I don't know. I mean, I think he um is very nice and funny and and uh, responsible mm. and enjoys life the way he wants and and. He's funny. Nice. Goofy. <laughs> good. Well, he's a good dad. I don't I don't know. It's been so long since then, you know. Well, I think what are some of the similarities that you see between me and my dad? Um sometimes your sense of humor. Like what? Um, what dry? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be careful on what I say too. Um I think your dad is a very responsible man. Um he worked hard all his life. Um he did the best he could with what he knew and what he believed. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as how he raised you and how you're raising Harvey, it's totally different. Mm -hmm. um, just the era we were in, you know, we we do whatever with our kids. We took them everywhere. And um, now you're kind of, now it's, you got to be more careful on what you do and what you say in front of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, cool. Anyway, anything else you want to add before we get off the phone? Uh, no, this was wild. Why is it wild? <laughs> I don't know. I I hate when I can't remember dates and times and stuff like that. It's like, so I feel like some of the things I said in the beginning might be off, you know, like. Well, and there's I, also a lot of, there's also a lot of, uh, I'm sure we could have this exact same conversation tomorrow and we'd have a different perspective on it, you know? So right, right. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that you could unfold if you, you, got right. to, you have to kind of go down the individual rabbit holes for that. And the idea was just kind of getting a little bit of overview of, of everything. I mean, we could talk for hours and figure, go do more, but right. You know, you know, I've got time for that. There's probably no one listening anymore anyway, for whoever started this podcast. So except for me. I I just um, hope that, like for me, I feel like I got a second chance in everything that I love. And um, 
I hope it's not too late for other people, you know, that they. As far as what? And what? As far as what? As far as how they raise their kids, how they enjoy their life, how they appreciate things, how they uh, take things for granted. Like, I just feel this last six years being totally alone as a woman, um, it's been the best six years of my life. It's been the best years of my life that I finally don't take things for granted and I appreciate things, you know, just in the kids and you and, and how lucky I am to have the relationship that we have with each other. Because mm. really, if you think about it, we've been together six years a lot yeah. and we've never had a... Well, we've probably, we probably seen each other more in the last six years than we saw from when I was in first grade all the way up until I graduated. All the way, yeah. I mean, we if you put how much we see each other and talk to each other and the things we do with Harvey and all that, it's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome. And I love it. Yeah. It's the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna stay in Vegas forever? Yeah. And I'm gonna die here. And this little home you got me. Yeah, we'll see if we can get that on the market. I, I love it. I've never stayed anywhere very long, and I love it here. Well, hopefully we can continue to afford it, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, I have to uh, get back to my normal job. Okay. But good, good, uh, good talking to you. I'll post this, and then you can share it with whoever you want. Okay. Love you. All right. I'll be back. Bye. Bye.